uh, he handed me my pen back and he said, you son of a bitch, he said, you, you know, you're making me sign this contract and I don't, you know, I, I have to think about dancing now and I said, you'll thank me later and he did. I was suspicious, to say the least, about why he would not uh, allow the insurance doctor to do a blood test on him or any doctor for that, for that matter because he insisted that we go to his doctor in Italy. We did ultimately receive uh, a report on his blood scribbled in Italian on a piece of paper that said he was in full health. In a way, yes, he was not the best custodian of his own gift. You see, the thing that kept Rudolph going when he shouldn't have gone anymore was the same passion that made him what he was to begin with. So you couldn't, in a way, say, oh, God, why doesn't he stop? It's obvious he didn't stop because he couldn't. He loved it so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you are invited to an audience with the king. Rudolf Noriev, the most celebrated dancer of our lifetime in Rodgers and Hammerstein's The King and I. Also starring Liz Robertson as Anna. For the first time, see Noriev command the stage in the show that commands your heart. Rudolf loved um, performing, and his home was the theater, I feel. And so as long as he could get into the theater, I think it gave him a purpose. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think hiding his illness was a performance. It was just, it, it was a, it, the performance was a means of making the day go by, and it was the only way he wanted to spend the day. We'd get in the limo, we'd stock up on some food, maybe some, some wine or some beer, and we'd travel more often than not into the dead of night to the next city and I can't tell you the number of of gasoline attendants that would get a glimpse of Rudolf Nureyev standing you know in the middle of, of, a, of a deserted highway at three or four o'clock in the morning and realizing who they were in the presence of. At the time that Rudolf Nureyev was here I had the pleasure, should I say, <laughs> of I was an usher here at the Playhouse Theater. We certainly knew that this was a legend coming into our theater. He was on stage every time that I came in. He was on a stage at the ballet bar. And he was on a cellular phone the whole time. His heart wasn't in the King and I to the degree that I think the producers and certainly myself would have liked it. Um, he. Uh, he was always thinking about the ballet, and, and there were numerous faxes flying to and from um, throughout the whole period of the tour. I think when he realized that he wasn't going to achieve what people hoped he was going to achieve in, in The King and I, I think he decided to give up. Ah, this is not for me. I, I find some other way of performing for my fans. He got a really fairly good review in, uh, in our local newspaper, and you know, he wasn't the best actor, I mean, this wasn't his forte, but he was very good, I thought. The critics, for the most part, were unkind to him, but he uh, made a million dollars in the first year, and the audiences packed the houses. He had a standing ovation after every performance, whether it was a matinee or an evening show, whether it was a small city like Portland, Oregon, or a major city like Boston, Massachusetts. He never complained about his physical malady. Uh, he coped with it uh, in an extraordinary way. On one hand, he realized that time was running out as there was no cure for AIDS, but he sped his life up so that his activities were increased. He conducted and, and he choreographed and he uh, continued to dance. It was really, for him, a reality, more real than life. You know, the dancers used to gather backstage when he was on stage, and they would weep because you, you could see how much he loved it. It was, it was spiritual.
saw Bella at the age of six first time, and of course I was flabbergasted and I saw, I, I, I knew that's what I'm going to do. Um, I remember when I came to the kindergarten next morning, uh, there's one room with the crystal chandelier and parquet floor. I was dancing away. I knew uh, without any doubt uh, that dance I'm to be, and uh, that's what I'm going to do. First, I have seen him on the Kiro stage uh, when he was dancing, uh, being pupil of the choreographic school in uh, Leningrad. Uh, and uh, um, I was fascinated by his dancing. And everybody said to me, know how talented you are. And, and finally something came, uh, clicked in my mind that uh, nobody's going to come and take me by hand and do or show me anything. I had to do it all myself. So that's what I was doing ever since. was out of himself with uh, happiness because he dreamed uh, to dance again on Kirov stage. He was at that time uh, 53 years old, I believe, uh, and he wanted to demonstrate that he is still a great dancer. Of course, it was difficult. It was difficult for him. And here I understood that this man, he is um, between the life and the um, dream. He is between the life and the dream. And these two parts, they try to divide him. you come in the country which you left near 20 years ago, it is not easy to dance. The small pupils asked me, Marina, you always told us about his great jump, about his pirouettes, about all, but he could not do it now. He did not do as we imagined it. And I answered him so, children, you must not think now about his spirits. You must see how he's acting. Have you seen this character that he created? It was wonderful. Когда поднялся занавес, я первую так ты вообще не слышал, потому что начинаются мои, мои движения. Я вообще не слышал, когда мне вступать, потому что шквал просто был овации. We were standing uh, and we applauded and all of us uh, cried, but it was fantastic evening. <laughs> 